How's it going everyone? It's Tavi from Weather Spongebob. That was just the day. It's June 21st, 2021 and today we're going to focus on our next potential tropical cyclone that could form in the middle of the Atlantic which could become Tropical Storm Danny as well as Tropical Storm Claudette and what it and what impacts it could bring to the United States. Well before I begin make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather video content. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather it comes. So let's begin by taking a look at the current IR loop for the entire northern Atlantic, at least the western half of the northern Atlantic. And you see that we do have several areas we are watching. We do have a lot of convection that's going on in the northern Gulf of Mexico area right now. However, there's just too much wind shear um, um, at this point for anything really to develop in this region, any sort of tropical system to develop. And we, of course, have Tropical Storm Claudette, which is now drifting quickly off into the Northeast. And we have this next tropical wave that could maybe become Tropical Storm Danny if the conditions are just right. So we're going to be begin by taking a look at the next potential tropical cyclone. This disturbance right here in the middle of the Atlantic and now approaching the Caribbean at this time. And you see it's just a disorganized area of showers. There isn't really... A lot of convection going on there isn't really a huge blow up of thunderstorms as you can see and there's a lot of pockets of dry air within these clusters of thunderstorms so it doesn't look very organized right now however it's it gonna be in somewhat of a conducive environment to where it could it does have the chance to develop over the next several days if we were to take a look at the current on um, forecast um the, ch the current um forecasted chance for this disturbance to develop you see that it's still a low chance 30 percent which is definitely good news um as you can see within the next 48 hours chance is still a low 30 percent while next five days it doesn't really change and you and you could probably see that um based off of this um area right here that it, this doesn't have a huge um this doesn't have a huge time frame to where it could develop into a tropical disturbance because as of right now it's in somewhat of a conducive environment to where it has a chance to develop however in the future it's gonna deal with a lot more hostile conditions so it's gonna it's very unlikely or pretty much impossible that it's gonna develop beyond this point at least within the foreseeable future since um, beyond this area the conditions become less conducive because the uh, wind shear will increase um, as well as the dry air so as a result the so as a result if this system were to develop it should develop within the next five days and currently the good news is that the chance is low but it's still at least something to be aware of especially if you're in the caribbean because even if this doesn't develop this could bring some heavy rain for you guys and potentially some flooding so you guys in the caribbean whether this develops or not need um need to pay close attention to this if we were to take a look at the wind shear map as of right now you see that right now it's sit under fairly light wind shear but there is a stark contrast if you just go slightly north um, northward where the wind shear increases drastically and it's as a direct result of um an upper level low that's located in this region that's bringing strong easterly wind i mean westerly winds throughout the atlantic which is pretty much going the opposite direction of where the trade winds in this area would go in the lower levels of the atmosphere where, where the lower level winds would primarily come from the east but the upper level winds are going the completely opposite direction so the wind shear is quite strong in this region and it's going to be very difficult for this storm to develop in this region pretty much impossible so it does have a small opportunity right here to develop into a tropical cyclone and it really all depends on how um, how much time it has over this area and another big factor we need to take a look at is how much Saharan dust there will be because you see that the storm is right around this area and you see there is an abundance of um, Saharan dust in the atmosphere at this point and now it's beginning to spread into the Caribbean and we're seeing it even approach the Gulf of Mexico at this point which is pretty typical when we're talking about um, when we're talking about tropical cyclones this early of the in the year, there typically is a lot of dust that comes from the Saharan Desert. It's not until August and September where the atmosphere really begins to moisten up, so the dust is nearly non-existent in the Atlantic, or it's 
pre pretty much away from the main development region but you see that there's a lot of dust and i think there's going to be the primary reason why this system um, won't develop if it doesn't develop because there's just going to be so much dust in the atmosphere which is going to inhibit tropical cyclone development because chop um because dry air means stable air and when the air is stable that means us air molecules that's water vapor rises up into the upper levels of the atmosphere to get some convection going to release state and heat which tropical cyclones require and pretty much the air is going to be too stable for any sort of wind or a lot of rain to occur within this disturbance which means that this won't really develop into a tropical storm a tropical cyclone at all if there's just a lot it's, if it's just going to deal with a lot of dry air what could maybe change this is if this storm really moistens up in the near future before it takes that turn up northwards um so it could sort of shield itself or be in a little bubble where it's protected by the dry air and um, taking a look at the gfs model forecast you see that this is what's happening as of right now and you see that there's just an abundance of dry air just to the north of it and you see the storm isn't very moist enough to really fend off a lot of this dry air as there's pockets of dry air in the storm and you could easily tell by the how the um this disturbance looks where the thunderstorm clusters aren't really um aren't really on um, that potent or bringing that much um, moisture in the atmosphere so so as so as a result there's going to have a difficult time to really develop under this dry air and you see as it moves further westward it does moisten up slightly and this is the key if it begins to moisten up really rapidly more rapidly than anticipated then it could sort of fend off this dry air and potentially develop into a tropical depression or tropical storm however the more likely scenario is that the dry air sort of swallows the storm up and while the energy will still remain there it's um by the time the energy moves further up northward and eastward that's when it's going to deal with a lot more wind shear to where the chance of this developing in the foreseeable future diminishes so if this were to develop it should develop relatively soon maybe within the next 48 hours and there's still a chance within the next five days as well but i'd say um i'd say the more likely scenario is that um this would develop in the near future but i'd say more likely than not this um if this were to develop it would develop in the near future i'm talking i'm talking like 48 hours from now however um however generally speaking this doesn't have a very good chance of developing mainly because of the saharan dust that's swallowing up the main development region um which is bringing just a lot of stable air into this disturbance and um once it moves up northward it's going to deal with a lot of wind shear while the wind shear is very light right now it isn't going to last for the storm once it moves up to the northeast so as a result the chance of this developing is currently low but it's at least important to be aware of this um in the caribbean because if we move forward you see that some of that moisture does eventually move into the caribbean so you could ha receive a heavy rain threat throughout the caribbean like puerto rico dominican republic haiti could all get involved in some rain associated with this low pressure system so you guys need to at least be aware of this especially if you're in the caribbean because there could be a rain threat out of this whether this develops or not so this is something to at least be aware of now moving on to a system that actually has developed tropical storm claudette and you see right now it's just off the coast of the delmarva peninsula i'd say it's probably a little bit more than 100 miles off the coast of the Delmar Peninsula and you see the forecasted track is bringing this um, out to sea however it could impact um, it could impact the Newfoundland area in Canada so you guys need to at least pay attention to that if you're in Canada but um, but outside of that there's also a United States threat if we were to take a look at the storm surge map for um, the Carolina coast you see that one to three feet of storm surge could is possible um, along the coastline or along the outer banks of North Carolina and this even extends further southward into Wilmington where we could see one to two feet of storm surge and if you don't know what storm surge is pretty much go um, right along the coast and stand on typically dry ground and then add one to three feet on top of that and that's how much flooding you should expect in the area you are standing at and um, you see that one to two feet is certainly a good amount and could cause um, 
and could cause some havoc. Um, so do not underestimate one to two or one to three feet of flooding because remember it only takes two feet of water to move a car and only six inches of swiftly moving water to knock you off your feet and I want to emphasize that because I want to keep you guys safe while one to three feet isn't anything it, it isn't anything that's so um it, it isn't considered um major for you guys along the outer bank since i know you guys experienced far worse tropical cyclones before in the past uh, however one to three feet is still something you certainly do not want to mess with because it still could cause some flooding but i'm taking a look at the at the satellite imagery of claudia you see it's fairly disorganized at this point it's moving quickly into the northeast at this point as a result of a trough a shortwave trough that's moving through the united states at this point and it's steering a lot and it's steering the storm quickly into the northeast and at that point it's and at this point it's getting a lot of help from the jet stream um when it comes to the strength because if it weren't for how fast the upper level winds are moving and how it's coinciding with the lower level winds this storm would completely die out but it's receiving a little bit of help as a result of barrel clinic influences um and this will eventually um this will eventually evolve into an extra tropical cyclone so um so maybe the wind field will expand but this isn't really fully tropical i'd say anymore and you see that there's a lot of dry air with the storm it isn't really developing and we have to keep in mind that it, at this point it's mostly under fairly um cooler waters um it um i'm not sure exactly where the jet stream lies but it, there, there's going to become a point where it's going to move too far north to where it's going to miss out on a lot of warmer jet stream water and it's going to go over water that's um that's closer to the 60 degree range and the 80 degree range so at that point the strength of the storm should certainly begin to want to um to um wind down as we begin to see the storm um, weaken and you see that the current track is taking this away from the united states which is certainly good news however be aware of at least some rip currents some um, along um, new england and um, the mid-Atlantic because just because this storm is very weak and well offshore of you guys does not mean it can't pose a threat of rip currents and, um, and high surf and um, it's unfortunate to say but rip currents are one of the leading causes of death weather related deaths in the United States and it's and it's sad to say because it's a death that's just very avoidable as long as you just um, stay smart and take precaution you could easily avoid risking your life so make sure to at least um be aware of rip currents along coast since that's certainly a threat even though the storm is um weak um but outside of that this should mainly move out to sea and eventually will impact the new found Canada. um so keep that in mind um and this will eventually evolve into an extra tropical cyclone so this won't be much of a worry there and then beyond i'd say tuesday and wednesday it should pretty much just drift out into open atlantic not being much of a threat to anyone so that's certainly good news but um yeah guys i guess that's it for this video i thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather icons make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see more weather icons and i hope you guys have a good day